As Uganda prepares to drill its first oil in 2025, little to nothing is said intentionally or unintentionally about natural resources of equal and greater importance such as iron ore. According to a government geological assessment completed between 2014 and 15, the Uganda Investment Authority estimates total deposits of the rock at 500 million tons, with 200 million tons of those confirmed in the Kigezi region alone. With a boom in property market, together with increased demand for steel, cars and appliances, the demand for iron ore is only bound to increase. As a result, the reserves in Uganda, which total 500 million tons, are grossly valued at approximately 52.7 billion US dollars at the current selling price of 105.42 billion US dollars. Also, according to current market value, the mineral deposits in the Kabale district are valued at over 7.7 .7 billion US dollars in Buhara, Katuna, Chikumbi, Karukara, Katuna, Kamuterere, Burhita, Muiguro, and other areas in the region. Manufacturers therefore want the government to be more deliberate about mineral beneficiation. Iron ore is a very strategic imperative for Uganda. And where we stand, we think that it is about time to come up with a consortium guided by the PPP law and policy because the legal regime now allows. So our conversation is in the direction of interfacing with your ministry to real actual, actualize that. There's been a lot of talking about mineral beneficiation in the past. We would want to see building blocks really uh, built by both parties. Companies like Tembo Steels, who are already engaged in iron ore beneficiation, attest to Uganda's iron ore being mined within the right regulatory framework. Our own iron ore from Kabale to Spanjaran. So 100,000 tons facility is still there in Niganga is running. And we are also putting up 300,000 tons plant of DRI. The civil work has already started. So which means that the scrap, as far as input is concerned, Tembo is very much into that, that the limited quantities of scrap will be consumed. And the balance will come from Kabale Arano. Uma chairperson echoes his counterpart's sentiment that investors are eager to invest and are simply waiting for government to establish an enabling environment. Local companies eh, are already using an ore and many companies have been investing and at a, a, some level of investment in the benefits. You had one of the proprietors of Tembo telling you that they're already doing 100,000 metric tons per annum of iron ore into sponge iron and they're investing a further 300,000. Other companies like roofing, steel and tube, uh, Great Lakes region are already in this space. What we are asking government is to provide the environment for us to play. This is a capital intensive investment, so we want a uh, long term uh, policy space for us to plan. The Mining and Minerals Bill passed last year aims to abolish the Mining Act of 2003, streamline industry operations, provide a transparent and accountable licensing framework, encourage in-country value addition, and improve management of mineral earnings. For these reasons, the minister recently made a comment regarding the transparency of mineral wealth. Of minerals ranging from gold, uranium, iron, cobalt, lithium, mention it, including, uh, you know, uh, marble. We also have uh, granite. We have all this. Now, when you ask how much do we have, I may not be able to quantify it now. But I can give you where they occur. There is no, there is no secret, secret about it. It is available. We have even put it on the web. Whoever wants to, to know what mineral occurs where, you can go to the cadastro map and you'll be able to know what mineral your house is seated on. 
Nonetheless, in handling iron ore, Uganda can imitate the government of Botswana under Celeste Kama that renegotiated the diamond mining agreement to guarantee itself the lion's share, that is 50% of diamond's revenue, like it did with the Tembo Steels plant in Iganga.